Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Spare Bedroom Studio. I am your man out of Japan, Jay Contra, and today we are going to talk about the most expensive games for the Famicom, particularly the top nine. Now, these are going to be main release, sort of wide release games. We're not going to focus on the games that maybe had very limited quantities printed of them. They were only attainable in special ways. All of these games you could have bought in a store in Japan at one point or another. Starting out with number nine, we have Castlevania at $500, released by Konami in 1993. Now, the reason that Castlevania in Japan is so expensive for the cartridge version is because Castlevania originally came out on the Famicom Disk System in 1986. Now, that copy can go from anywhere from $40 to $50, but the cartridge is so expensive simply because it was part of this release of both Nintendo and Konami games that happened in the early 90s, well after the Famicom had sort of given way to the Super Famicom. You had these disk system games that were like treasures, like for one example would be uh, the original Legend of Zelda that was originally released on the Famicom disk system and it was so popular and people actually wanted to play it on the recently released AV Famicom. The, the Famicom disk system only lasted for a couple of years in Japan but people wanted cartridges, so they ended up reprinting some of those games as cartridges, and Castlevania had such a low print run, and there was such a high demand for Castlevania because of it's an amazing game and it's part of an amazing franchise, that today it is worth $500. Coincidentally, a complete in box US version of Castlevania goes for about $130 on eBay. So it's one of those curious examples where Japanese games tend to be cheaper than their American versions, but there are the oddities that it's actually reversed, where the Japanese version is much more expensive than the American version. At number eight, we have Snow Brothers, which is at $550. It was released by Toa Plan in 1990. A US version of Snow Brothers goes for about $250 for the cart. I cannot find how much it goes for if it's complete in box. It's an action platformer. I've never played it myself, so I can't give you much more information than that. At number seven, we have Moon Crystal, which is also $550 and was released by Hector in 1992. It is an action platformer that has beautiful animation and kind of looks a bit like Castlevania. It, has a, it evokes that same kind of style, only I think, I think the animation is just a little bit better. I've not played it myself, but having seen some footage online, I would really like to play it myself, although I don't think I'll be spending uh, upwards of $600 for a complete in-box version. At number six, we have Little Samson, released by Taito in 1992 for $650 for the Japanese version. Interestingly enough, a cartridge of the American version of Little Samson goes for $1,900 today, and who can even imagine what it goes for if it's complete in box? Now, this is a game that I have played myself. It's very fun. I haven't managed to beat it yet, but... I do think it's worth playing if you can perhaps find it through other nefarious means. Paying $2,000 for the American copy of the game uh, might be a little bit of an ask, although the Japanese copy in cartridge form usually goes for less than $200. At number five, we have Gimmick, which was released by Sunsoft in 1992, and today can be priced at over $650 for the Japanese version. Now, this was not only released in Japan, there is also a European version, which, when it's complete, can go for more than $1,400 the last time that I checked on eBay. It is an action platformer, which I actually think has been the theme so far. When we look at Castlevania action platformer, Snow Brothers action platformer, Moon Crystal action platformer, Little Samson action platformer, Gimmick is an action platformer, but number four will shock you. At number four, we have Over Horizon, which was released by Pixel in 1991. Over Horizon is a shooter that also came out in Europe where it can go for $420 on eBay. In Japan, finding a complete inbox copy of this game can be quite difficult, with the cartridge being significantly less in price, but still very expensive. Speaking of scrolling shooters, at number three, we have the best scrolling shooter for the Famicom. We have Summer Carnival 92 Rekka, which was released by Nagzatsoft in 1992, and it costs $950 for a complete copy. Summer Carnival 92 is a reference to this 
event that happened in Japan called the Summer Carnival. It happened, I think, for two or three years. I think there was a Summer Carnival 93 as well, where they would release a game, people would buy it, they would practice it at home, and then they would go to this traveling event that would go around Japan, and they would try to hit the high score. Rekka is fast, the music is great, and I love the art design of it. It is a great game, and I would highly recommend it to anybody that loves scrolling shooters. The runner-up for most expensive Japanese Famicom game at number two is Bio Miracle Bokute Upa, which is a 1993 game released by Konami, of all, of all companies, and it, it can now go for $1,100. Now, I should note that this is for the cartridge version of the game. It was originally released as a disc system game in 19, 1988, excuse me. Now, that's very interesting to me because by 1988, I think the disc system was already sort of on the decline, so it probably wasn't released in great numbers anyway. And then for whatever reason, it was released five years later as a cartridge, which I didn't think people would have been clamoring for it. But it is a pretty cool-looking action platformer where you play as a baby. Maybe that speaks to some people. Maybe they want to play that kind of game. I haven't played it myself. But still, more than $1,000 for a complete cartridge game by Konami. That's very interesting and brings up something that I want to talk about after we talk about the number one most expensive regularly released Japanese Famicom game, which is Super Spy Hunter, also known as Battle Formula in Japanese, which goes for $1,150. It was released by Sunsoft in 1991. And in America, it was released as Super Spy Hunter, where it costs about $150. So much like Castlevania, it's one of those flip <laughs> flip side of the usual equation where the American version is cheaper than the Japanese version. Why it is so much more expensive, I'm not sure. Possibly just because it was printed in really low numbers in Japan. And it is a really cool looking shooter that I would love to play one of these days. <laughs> Although I don't know if I'll be shelling out more than a thousand dollars for it. If you look at all of the games on this list, I think we can see a couple of patterns which I think go into the broader what makes a game super expensive. Well, I think the first category is that all of these games were released after 1990. We have one game, yes, looking at my list, we have one game that was released in 1990 and all of the other games were released after 1990. Now, what is so important about the year 1990? Well, for one, that is the year that the Super Famicom was released in Japan. The next generation of consoles were already in full swing at that point with the Genesis and the PC Engine having released before. But the Famicom was seven years into its life cycle, so you can imagine that most of these games are, one, benefiting from the fact that after years of development experience having built up, some of these games are the best in their category for the Famicom. But they're also coming out very late in the system's life cycle to the point where attention was probably shifted away from the Famicom so that these actually received very low print numbers. I can tell you that when we look at Biomiracle Bokute Upa and Castlevania, because these were cartridge releases of popular disc system games, they probably weren't printed uh, very highly. But then you look at The Legend of Zelda in its cartridge version in Japan is, is quite expensive. So it was probably not printed, these games were not printed on the level of The Legend of Zelda, and they are very highly sought after, thus driving the price. What's interesting about the Famicom is normally I would have told you that if it was a good game developed by a relatively obscure publisher that is a very good game, then this would probably drive the price up. But looking at some of these developers, we've got Sunsoft, Konami, these are very well-known developers. So I don't know if there's a weird thing where these are just games that were not printed highly or the demand is just so high. And they're also not really exclusive to Japan. Super Spy Hunter is not exclusive to Japan. Number two, the Bio Miracle Book de Upa is very expensive, uh, or, or is exclusive to Japan. Summer Carnival is exclusive to Japan. So Over Horizon came out in Europe. Castlevania is not exclusive to Japan. So looking at this list, it's very hard to give a unified theory about what makes a game so expensive. So I think you have to take all of these on a case by case basis, but that's the beauty of collecting games. And especially when you get to the most expensive games, some things can really defy obvious explanation. 
I should note that the prices for these games have been taken from a, a few different websites, notably uh, Sudagaya and Mandarake. Prices on these games are going to be variable, and I'm also drawing the American prices or the European prices from eBay for those specific versions. And if you think I've left a game off this list, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to see if you found a game that perhaps I wasn't able to find in my research. I've been your man out of Japan, Jay Contra. Thanks for watching, and... Mahalo.